Hello and welcome to the C++ and Science YouTube channel, where I will teach you various topics around C++. I'm your host, Andreas Fertig, a trainer and consultant for C++. In the light of the last episode's content, references are no pointers, it occurred to me that I never presented you structured bindings from back of C++ 17's portfolio. So here we're looking at an example illustrating structured bindings. Say I have a struct point here with two data members X and Epsilon. I'm creating a point PT here with the values 2 and 3. Then I can use structured bindings as you see them in line number 11 and decompose decomposition declarations is another name for structured bindings. Decompose P2 in its two components x and epsilon and I can create myself two new variables and name them Arnold and Bertha here. I always have to say auto and the square brackets here and now I have two new variables to refer to my pts x and epsilon. The transformation in C++ inside hopefully makes it a little more clear what's happening behind the scenes so first of all, the compiler creates a new intermediate object. I have to find a name for it. So it's PT11, the line number where this resulted from. It copy constructs a new point object using PT here. So we are looking at the copy at the moment. My variable Arnold and Berta, they are references to the members X and Epsilon in PT. So knowing that references are just aliases for these names, that means that we are directly accessing pt11.x here when we say Arnold and pt11epsilon when we access Berta. But it's a nicer way of accessing them, especially if you have something like a key value, like a std pair, where you can really name that key value instead of first and second. So you either can give it better names, shorter names, more meaningful names. This is something that structured bindings can do for you. If you are unhappy with the fact that your object here created a copy, then it's up to you to say, okay, I want a reference. Once we are doing that, you can see my output here changes. I still have this intermediate object, PT11, but now it's a reference initialized with PT. The rest remains the same. This intermediate object is mainly to solve possible additional alignments we set on our data types to not have to mirror them anywhere. And you can also say you want a const reference to your data members by adding const here. So it's more or less the full flexibility you have with auto, as you know it from the regular auto. Now we have a const int reference to the two data members. They can also be different. One could, for example, be a floating point number. Let's make that 3.14. And if I transform that, then we can see Arnold here is an integer, while Berta now is a float reference. Everything is here up to our customization. This is how structured bindings work. The new names they introduce are just aliases for the individual data members they are referring to. If you take everything by reference, then you also get away of the copy and you do not have to pay for that one. But of course, if you want to have your original object left untouched, you either use a const reference or go the way over the copy. So these are structured bindings. They date back to C++11. I use them a lot, especially if I have uh, range-based for loops that iterate over a map, for example then I can create the two nice names, key and value. I always like that. I hope if you haven't heard about the feature, then you now start using it. And if you heard about it, then you now have a better understanding how it works internally. And it's not scary at all. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.